the problems facing this president are awesome. You have to go back more than three quarters of a century to Franklin Roosevelt to find anything comparable. Just compare what we are seeing right now with the biggest issues facing our last president, George W. Bush, when he came into office sworn in eight years ago. Because he said in his inaugural address, if you'll recall, the three main principal uh, points that he stressed were restoring dignity to the Oval Office, a humble foreign policy, and raising school test scores. By contrast, Barack Obama has inherited the worst economy since the Great Depression. Unemployment climbing toward the double digits. So many Americans have now lost their homes or are about to, have lost their 401ks or a great part of the value of their retirement. They've lost their pensions and for too many people, the prospect of sending their children to college. Moreover, we know that most of these people are not coming off solid economic times anyway. We know that most of the gains of the last eight years were tilted to people who were already pretty well off. Average workers were struggling even before this current economic crisis hit. And there is deep worry. I don't have to tell anyone in this room about how fragile our financial institutions are. Who ever thought that under a Republican administration and a Republican central banker that the federal government would be bailing out Wall Street or that venerable Wall Street firms like Bear Stearns and Merrill Lynch would no longer even exist. Today, the worries over the banking sector have only grown. In fact, if you think across the board about the domestic challenges facing our country, they are pervasive. Health care, and I don't have to tell those of you uh, who, uh, who follow the news on a day-in, day-out basis what the challenges there are. And I mentioned uh, that remarkable visit that, uh, that I had this morning to the Anschutz campus of the medical, uh, the medical center at the University of Colorado doing the kind of cross-cutting and, and pioneering research that this entire country is going to benefit from. But even with that kind of remarkable research putting us ahead of any other country in the planet, we still have enormous challenges with regard to health care because there's so many Americans who either don't have health insurance or who are underinsured. 54 million Americans don't have health insurance, around 50 million, and another significant number uh, don't have enough health insurance. Another piece of the economic, or I'm sorry, of the domestic agenda is education. We know that whether it is K through 12 or higher education, there is so much that this country uh, has yet to do and has to work on in that arena. And I think that's why you hear this president almost in every speech saying, yes, the economy is focus number one, but we can't forget health care and education, energy, and the environment. The challenges internationally are no less imposing. Uh, President Obama has said, yes, he does intend to spend most of his focus on the domestic economy. But as we saw, what did we see happen in the Middle East just as this president was taking office? Uh, the, uh, the fighting between Gaza, the militants uh, in the Gaza Strip, and Israel, reminding us once again that the world is sometimes not considerate of a president's priorities. So it's no surprise that within just a few days of taking office, Barack Obama had not only named a special envoy to the Middle East in George Mitchell, but he had sent him off to the region to meet with the leaders there. Typically in this modern era, our presidents have waited a year or two or even more to get involved in the Middle East because of the difficult, difficult, historic quagmire that that region of the world represents. But given the crisis on the ground and, frankly, given the activism of this president and the activism of our new Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, it was not going to happen that, that way this time. But look around the rest of the globe. The picture doesn't get a lot brighter. Bill Perry, the very sober and sensible former Secretary of Defense, just a few weeks ago predicted that, that Iran is going to be testing this new administration very soon. I was fascinated that President Obama chose to give his first television interview as president to Al Arabiya, one of the Middle East's major news channels. He said in that interview, he said, it is my job to communicate to the Muslim world 
that Americans are not your enemy. He criticized Iran's leaders for their actions, but he said it's important that our two countries talk to each other. More than a few foreign policy experts think as great a danger could come from Russia, resurgent in ambition but reeling economically now with the precipitous dry drop we've seen in the price of oil. A wounded, aggressive bear, as we've all been reminded, is a dangerous animal. And you know, as recent history has taught us, any static analysis is also dangerous. Because on January the 20th, 1961, John F. Kennedy did not expect the Bay of Pigs, which came along soon after. And eight years ago today, the new Bush team certainly did not foresee anything like 9-11. President Obama, while calling for gradually drawing down our presence in Iraq, has already announced, in fact, just last week, that he is going to beef up our troop presence and our effort in Afghanistan. That may be necessary. It may even be desirable. It does raise the question, what is our mission? What's our goal in Afghanistan? Is it, as it was initially, to get Osama bin Laden? Most experts will say, well, he's not even in Afghanistan right now, but rather in the mountains of Pakistan next door. Is it to drive out the Taliban and to reform the Afghan government and society? Uh, again, history suggests that this is an arduous undertaking. I happened to interview just last Thursday on the news hour Richard Holbrook, who's a newly named envoy to Afghanistan and Pakistan. And when you ask him what is the mission of this new administration and how does it differ from the mission under President Bush, his answer is, uh, and reasonably so, that they are undergoing a strategic uh, analysis right now, and that in another couple of months, their goal is to come forward with a new statement of what America's policy will be uh, under President Obama. And we, pro and we haven't even mentioned what's probably going to be the most important bilateral relationship America experiences in the next generation, and that's China. Of course, it was on Secretary of State Clinton's list of countries to visit when she was there uh, in the region in Asia last week. But the only other country in the world that really could achieve our sort of superpower status in some of our lifetimes, the economic as well as the diplomatic and conceivably even military challenges here are daunting. Still, this is a, this is a fairly dark picture a grim picture I've been painting for all of you this afternoon, but there is that old axiom that it's always darkest before the sunlight.